Hi there. You may have seen us at our Facebook premiere event where we were giving you our helpful on looking after your stoma. We had so many questions that we could only fit a certain amount in. So we're really happy to share with you a few more of the frequently asked questions about caring for your stoma. What are your tips for someone who has recently had stoma surgery? Um, so if you just had, to, just listen to your stoma care nurse, they will explain everything to you. Um, we have a pathway where you, you're seen within the hospital and given all the information. Once you've come out of hospital, you want to, once you've gone home, try and get into your normal routine. Just go about your life as you normally did it's it shouldn't be much different you just have to spend a little time in the morning changing a pouch but try and get back into a routine um you won't be able to drive for quite a while for about six weeks and you need to be able to do the emergency stop before you can drive but you want to try and um go out for walks every now and again just to build that strength up but equally not do too much that you're going to risk you know causing yourself any physical damage um so you have to be careful with heavy lifting um and things like that but you know also do try and get a little bit of exercise that you're building yourself up you know start eating and drinking how you normally did and just get back into that routine that you normally have at home it's your own home you can do whatever you like I think also just give yourself a break it's a big surgery yeah at how tired I was I was I was literally the first two weeks I saw that so much I thought, oh, I'm so lazy and now <laughs> I'm feeling itself that's it, was a it. Big you've been through massive surgery and they're not kind when they when they you know when they do the surgery they're not gentle you know so your body has gone through a, quite a lot um so you you need to and what you might find is that there's a day where you suddenly think oh my god I feel really good I can do so much and then the next day you'll feel really rubbish and tired again and you might feel a little bit of pain a little bit nausea and you think oh my god what's happening and that happens it can be a little bit of a roller coaster of a recovery so it is about taking one day at a time and just listening to what your body is telling you so if, if you're having long periods of, of feeling tired, rest, let your body, you know, rest. But again, equally go out for little walks every now and again, get some fresh air, go back home, rest again. Yeah, just, you know, rest up and do, what, do whatever you can and get just back into that routine once you get home. Yeah, I, I, I sort of agree, Sam. I think it's, it's you know everybody's surgery and everybody's experience is different but acknowledging that you've been through it's, it's a major trauma whether you've been admitted on an emergency basis or a schedule basis so you've got to give yourself time to recover from it and, and I suspect again people tend to focus on how do I manage my stoma how do I manage the bag or whatever and not necessarily think about that period afterwards the focus is on that intense sort of you know initial sort of couple of weeks or whatever so you know, it is that roller coaster and it's about listening, just listening to your body and, and just giving yourself time to recover, for sure. I think that's really and key and important. Just know that you will get there. Yeah. You know, it'll yeah. take a bit of time, but you will get there. And it, it'll suddenly be that, you, you know, you, you're normal again and you're able to do everything you could before. Uh, it's, it's such a shock, even if it's something that's planned. You know, I, I saw the stoma tennis in hospital before I had my surgery and they showed me all the different pouches. So I felt like I was going into it quite prepared. I've been in hospital for a few weeks, so I knew this was coming. But it, nothing prepared me for that moment of waking up. And I just, I didn't want to look down. Even though I knew what was going to be there, I was so frightened. And then my stoma for the first time like now I, I have no issue it's just part of my daily 
routine, just, you know, like any other part of my body. But the first time I saw my stoma, I was, I was very upset. It, it, it really hit me hard. Um, and so uh, it's hard because on one side, I think, you know, make sure you understand what you're going through and what your body's going to look like. But on the other hand, I know that Googling or searching certain things means that you come up with some horrific images. That <laughs> see. So maybe looking at, you know, good educational sources to see this is what your body will look like afterwards. Because I think for me, that was a really big shock. Yeah, I always say to patients that the stoma, when you first see it, is unfortunately at its ugliest because it's got the, you know, it's it's quite edematous with fluid. It's got the stitches all around it and it just doesn't look very, very nice. Um, and I, I say that this settles down, the stitches go and it starts looking better a bit later. But unfortunately, when you first see it, it is quite a shock. So I do prepare that it will look better. Yes, it looks like it'll be incredibly sore and you're already in pain. So you think, oh my gosh, what on earth is this? It looks because it's so red and you're not used to seeing yeah. it. Yeah, I think that's just the, the, the color of it. Um, but I explain that it's the same tissue as inside your mouth. So it, it should be the same color as inside your mouth. And they're like, oh, okay. So, you know, that explanation does help them realize that that color is normal. Okay, our next question is sort of going into more when there's issues. And it's, why does my pouch keep leaking? So, you know, there can be lots of different reasons why your pouch might be leaking. Um, it, it can be a case that the whole size isn't quite accurate. Um, so you might need that checking. Um, it might be that your body shape has changed to an extent that you might suddenly have a, a little bit of a dip or a crease near the stoma, which, you know, allows for a channel for the output to come out. Um, it could be that you're, um, you've, you've got a hernia, which means your stoma suddenly changed change size but your hold hasn't changed size um it it could be so it it depends on what sort of leaking it is so it could be leaking that your output consistency has changed so suddenly you've got about diarrhea so then that's making the pouch changed or you're equally having um a pancaking issue um so that, that's where the, the output gets very thick and sticky and leaks out that way. So the problem is what we've got to do first is find out the reason why you're leaking. Once we found out why you're leaking, we can then put measures in place. If so, if it's to do with your consistency, we can look at maybe um, a, a diet alteration to um, increase, thicken up your output or loosen up your output. If it's a crease or, or a hernia, something that's physically changed in your body, we can look at different types of pouches, um, some accessories such as paste or um, a washer, or if it's a hernia that you, you, you have, we can look at one of the pouches that's gonna help mold around that hernia a lot better. So there's lots of things we can do, but we need to work out why it's happening first. And we shouldn't just have to live with leaks. If you're leaking, something's no. not quite right. Yeah, that's it. Something needs to change. So, so sorry, Sandy, can you talk a bit more about the products you can try? Yeah, I, I think just sort of reinforcing, I think that there's a couple of questions really. It's, you know, if we're, if we're in a situation where it is, why does it keep leaking? Then it's almost telling you that something's not right. Um, so if it if it keeps leaking, then you have to think about the fit. You know, how is that product fitting around my stoma? Um, and then sort of going back to what we were talking about, you know, the conformability of our new flange and those comfort curves can help really sort of maintain the integrity of a really good fit but going back I think to what Emma was saying it's also I think the other question is what's changed so if everything has been fine and then suddenly you're starting to get a situation where you're starting to leak 
what has changed to make that difference or what's going on with my health anyway. And I think that's important because even sort of if you don't have a stoma, your body's changing all the time. You know, sort of I think if you're a woman, if you're going through the menopause, you know, there's lots of changes going on anyway. So it's almost sort of you need a product that's right for you at that particular time. So it's really important to when you find something, I think you tend to think, I found something that works for me and it's great. But it's also that when things start to change, if, if you're somebody that's been an ostomate for a very, very long time, then it's likely that something will have changed between that first time that you started and, and where you are now. And that would be quite normal. But it's it's really thinking there are solutions around. There are people that can help fix the problem and I think again going back to what you said very succinctly Sam is you don't need to put up with it you know if there's a leak it's saying there's a problem so let's get it fixed and there are solutions that are out there. A lot of people I speak to have used the same bag that they were given in hospital for their entire lives yeah the reality is there's tons of different products if someone never changed or only used the one that they were given in hospital how do they start to find different products? Sandy. Me, okay. (laughs) Um, So I think, think, again, it's about, you know, looking at sort of what your needs are. Let's identify what your needs are. What has changed from that, that first, as you say, that acute episode when you've had surgery and then really looking at, you know what? What's available? I mean, there's so much available now on social media that you can do a lot of research. Obviously, the first point of contact is going to be um, somebody like Emma, um, you know, or back to your stoma nurse because the stoma nurses obviously have access to a whole range of product. I think the difficulty is, is with you know when you're going back to the people in your acute setting, your stoma nurses, there is so much product. So it's 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 probably about doing your research as well. But also then linking up with somebody like Emma that can can really sort of start to look at what is going on. You know, let's look at in detail what's going on, what's changed and what what is the right thing now to probably help you in this next phase. Because that next phase might be for the next two or three years until something changes again. So, yeah, that, that would be my response, I think, Sam. Great, thank you. Okay, this question is, will people be able to tell that I have a bag? I'm going to stand up to see, to show. Can you tell that I've got a bag? Oh, I'm gone. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm wearing a dress to work today. Lovely. I'm going to say no. No, no, No. can't tell. What what I tend to to say to people is like, there's thousands and thousands of people with, with stomas in the country. And if you go to a major shopping centre and you look around, can you tell somebody else has a stoma? Because they won't be able to tell that you've got one either. And kind of pull it round round that sort of way because, you know, yeah, you, you're definitely right. You can't tell. So they should just, yeah, get on with their lives. It'll be fine. And there's so... It, there's some products, so the, the black or a plus bag, um, in a weird way, I don't know how to put this. So when I put, when I first wore it, my husband said, oh, that doesn't look like that. And he said, it's almost like it's camouflage, but it's not because it's black, but it doesn't look medical at all. Mm. It just almost looks like as part of your underwear set. Um, so there's loads of different products that we can use that, can make you feel more comfortable about wearing your bag in public. Can you tell us a bit more about that, Sandy? Yeah, just agreeing, really. I think that, you know, the, the choice now that people have with colours or whatever, so it makes it much less of a medical looking. I think that subconsciously people have got into the habit of this is a medical device and a medical colour, which obviously it is. It's, it's, it's doing a function for you, but just... That, that small thing of changing the colour of the bag can make such a massive difference. But I think it's going back to what we said earlier is that people won't be able to, you know, just by looking, they won't know. I think that as an individual, you're going to be very conscious of it yourself because you've been through that whole trauma of surgery, but people outside won't, won't be able to know. 
you know, they, they won't know what you've got to do. So it's, it's, about, it's about being confident, isn't it? You know, yeah. you've been through it, you've survived, you're now in a situation where you're getting on with your life. So it's being confident that you've actually been through that and, and you know, here you are kind of getting on with your life and what you're doing. So, yeah. and the bag is, is, is enabling you to do that. So, you know, years ago, we wouldn't, you know, that that wouldn't have happened. So it's enabling you to do that and carry on with your life. So. And generally, you'll be able to wear the same sort of clothes as you wore before. Yeah, yeah. You can even wear sparkly hairbands, Sam. There you go. <laughs> I do wear certain things. So I have some underwear that has like a, a little pouch inside it. So it just sort of keeps my bag sort of away from my skin, but tucked in clothes. I occasionally will wear things like um, my uh, gym leggings or maternity leggings, just because they come up high and they cover everything up. So occasionally I'll wear slightly different things, but on the whole, I wear whatever I want. So the next question is, how do I talk to my friends and family about my stoma? Um, it's a difficult thing. People say to me, oh, you're really open. So it's easy for you, but I don't want to talk about it. And I don't think there's a, a right way. I, I am super open. I talk about everything online, but that's not necessarily the right thing for everyone. Um, any advice on how to talk to your family and friends about your stoma? I would say um, to start off with the closest person to you. Um, don't be scared to let them know. I mean, if you've had major surgery and you've been in hospital, they would probably known that's happened anyway um even if it's an emergency they would know that you've had big surgery so then it's just a case of just being as open as you can and just you know talking to the person's closest to you first and I'm sure you know if, if they're going to be supportive no matter what um, and then you could think about branching out to other people, but take your time, do it as, you know, it's just whatever you feel comfortable with um, when, in regards to telling people. The, the, the thing is, what I hear most about from patients is, oh, well, what if it makes a noise, you know, and you, while I'm in public? And my, my answer is to a lot of people is, well, you know, if you you've got a dog next to you just blame it on the dog or you know if you're standing next to your husband just go you know Dave you know you know and just make a joke of it make it quite light-hearted rather than being ashamed of it you know there's no reason why anybody should know you've got a stoma but it's if there's a noise it, it's probably a better way to deal with it is to make it light-hearted rather than being ashamed because we all we'll do it we'll make noises we do and honestly my my stone has made a couple of noises whilst we've been recording this so you might have heard some of mine anyway but really it doesn't tend to sound much more than like a big gurgly tummy exactly yeah we all do have and um, what about talking to kids about stomas I've got three children. They were all quite young when I first got mine. We're a very open family, so I just explained everything. Um, but I had my, my best friend's son came over and I could see him staring. And I said, do you have any questions? You can ask me anything. Mm. And he said, um, can I see it? I said, yeah, of course you can. So I lifted my T-shirt up and I showed him my pouch. And he went, no, can I see what's inside? <laughs> No. <laughs> they are super curious, aren't they? They I are. The best way to talk to, to children and young people about, about your own stoma. I think it's just what you've said, Sam, just being being honest and, and expressing or um, telling them, you know, to how you feel happy saying you know telling them you know because it's your stone it's your body um so you need to feel happy about what you say as well um I believe there are I think some of the um associations do have little booklets that you can show to children um that can explain things things about stomas um but 
I think I think you've done, you know, just be honest with them and just, you know, show them your bag or if you don't want to show them your bag, show them what another bag looks like. Yeah. I think the kids just accept things and move they on. They do. They accept it a lot easier than adults. <coughs> yeah, they do talk at a local scouts group about my own stoma and about disability for their disability badge um oh. it was fantastic a group of sort of eight to ten year olds we got to the end and i said right any questions you can ask anything and this little boy put his hand straight up excuse me excuse me excuse me and i thought what's he going to ask and he said, excuse me excuse me uh, why is your hair a different color next to your head than at the end <laughs> this boy stoma <laughs> and he calling me out on my roots so yeah <laughs> so I can move on and ask you something terribly embarrassing about something else and that's it kids... once you've told them they kind of move on to something else because they've lost that you know you've told them that's it end of story I'm going to find something else more interesting so <laughs> yeah it's, it's not a big thing to them how can I get emotional support about my illness and getting a stoma we've talked quite a lot about the physical side of, of the brain of having a stoma but I think for many people the the mental health side and the emotional side can be just as difficult at first any thoughts on that so there are lots um of a support out there really so there, there might be local support groups that you can get involved with um, there's also the associations so depending on what stoma you've got you could probably contact the colostomy association the eliostomy association or the um, urostomy association and they also have ostomates that if you want to speak to you can um, also your home delivery service and your stone kennels will have lots of resources to help you as well. Sandy? Yeah, again, lots lots of online resources. So, you know, that's probably the reason, Sam, that you, you started up your own um, thing sort of on Twitter and, and social media is that, that that's so accessible. I know some people have sort of said after that initial support, it's almost that sort of for their mental well-being, it's that they didn't want to keep running through that whole thing. It was almost trying to get back to some sort of normality. So I, I, as Emma has said, that there are, there are so many super sort of um, support groups that are available and are there, but also don't be afraid to reach out to those that just offer mental health support that's not associated with stoma. If, if you're kind of at a point that you know at this point in time I actually am trying to get back to normal so I don't want to keep going over um what's going on with the stone I sort of want the mental health so it, it's about reaching out to to those sorts of organizations and there are you know there are so many now you know that are available on Facebook or on Twitter or um you know sort of everywhere really so but it but it's reach out there is support that's available there's lots of signposting available so sort of reach out for, for whatever support you need, really. Yeah. Thank you. What about sex? Now, I get so many questions about sex because it's quite a difficult subject to bring up. When you see your doctor or your consultant, you have a short amount of time and you don't, you, you, the sex questions are probably quite low down in the priority of things you need to talk about. What about sex? Sex with a stoma? So, yeah, sex is a difficult um, topic. Um, it also depends on your surgery as well, because a lot of the surgeries deep down in the pelvis. So um, some surgery might have um, effects on your ability to have sex. So you need to speak to, you need to make it a priority. It is a priority. So don't be afraid to ask that question. So first of all, you know, find out if you, if you can have sex. So talk to your surgeon um, as to whether there's been any damage. Um, if there is, the surgeon can talk to you about things to, to um, you know, to help with that damage to make things work again so you can have sex in terms of if you can have sex and it's not a problem um just 
just go for it. Just, you know, talk to your partner, be very open um, to your partner. There are things that you can do, such as wearing a little mini cap, which is a very small pouch, so that you haven't got this big pouch flapping around a little bit. Um, you can have, um, you can wear, there are underwear companies um, that you can get in contact about having some different types of underwear. Um, and, you know, just be really open with your partner. You might want to try different sexual positions so that, you know, you feel more com confident if you're not, you know, seeing your pouch. Um, but yeah, just just talk to your partner, be open about it and just give it a go. Sandy? Yeah, I think people are going to be tentative, aren't you? It's the same as what we said earlier, sort of going back to it, if you've had a major surgery, you know, if you're used to sort of regular intimacy sort of with your partner, then then that's one thing that's initially going to be sort of, you know, on, on the back burner, but at some point you're going to want to sort of address that. But I think, as Emma said, there are some products out there that as far as the actual stoma bag is concerned can make it more discreet. Um, but again, you know, it, it's a bit like exercise. You know, if you're used to intimacy, that's so important again for your mental health. So it's about being open and, you know, just as long as physically there is no reason that you can't, you know, you've just got to have the confidence to go for it. And if you, you're in a relationship with a partner where you can talk about it and, you know, just just sort of sort of see it as sort of as fun, really, and just trying to get back into that normal sort of way of living. If that's part of your normal life or whatever, then you want to try and sort of ease back into that as well, I would think. I've, I've got a few gay male friends who have had the same surgeries as me and sex wasn't even discussed with them and obviously yeah. that, uh, people who have had you know they've got a permanent ostium so had everything the, the rectum removed mm. really affects you know, yet so many people seem to be selling with that it's not information that they get from the hospital should we be changing that Oh, definitely. Yeah. They need the education to be able to be able to have sex safely um, and need to know what to do and what to look out for. Um, so, yeah, it, it should definitely please. They should talk to their surgeon um, if they can or their stomach care nurse. Um, it is something that probably, yeah, is ignored, but it shouldn't be. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned intimacy, Sunday, because I think um, as somebody who's had, I've had 10 surgeries, 10 major surgeries in the last eight years, there have been lots of times where I'm not physically well enough to, to have sex, but actually intimacy and closeness mm. isn't about the act of penetrative sex. Am I allowed to say penetrative sex on here? I've just done it. <laughs> <laughs> intimacy and closeness is, is very important if you're in a relationship. Um, and like you said around, you know, uh, exercise and all the other things, over time, you'll learn your new normal. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Will I have to change my diet because of my stoma? Now, I'm going to say, and I, I've had some fantastic nurses and medical staff, but one person did say to me, oh, you'll never eat a curry again. And it was enough the cuff jokey thing to say and what she didn't know is that my family is Indian and I just suddenly thought that's it I'm I'm not never going to be able to sit down with my family again and enjoy a meal and it devastated me I, I think that diet's quite a difficult thing to talk about because personally I believe that we're all very individual and I've never seen a diet for a stoma that I think, well, that would work for everybody. What are your thoughts on that? Yes, yeah, Sam, you, you're completely right. There's, there's not, you know, everybody's so different and foods affect people in such different ways. I don't think it's, it's fair to say to um, new ostomates, you can't have this, you can't have this, and you can't have this, because it, it's not realistic. Um, I always say to people, just try it. Uh, and, and see what happens. You know, you'll know whether it, it's not feasible and it doesn't suit because yeah, everybody's different. 
I mean, that yes, there are foods and you'll see lists of foods that will affect wind. And it's the same foods that you would have eaten before having your stoma. You know, it's the usual suspects. It's baked beans. It's it's cabbage. It's, you know, broccoli. It's the same foods. Um, and also there are foods if you have an ileostomy that might cause blockages, such as um, vegetables that don't digest very well, carrots and sweet corn and and things like that and, and nuts. But I, I say to people, just chew your food really well. Don't eat too much of one, one thing, you know, don't have a big container of, of nuts and find out what's going on um, and, and drink while you're eating and just, you know, just experiment and see what happens with food. I think it's very unfair that people are told that you have to take skins off off a um, tomato and I think I had heard one dietitian say to an ostomate that they had to take the pips off a strawberry <laughs> it's like how, how? Yeah. It, it just doesn't work that way you know have your strawberry see what happens I'm sure it'll be fine don't worry about it so I think every everybody just needs to relax in terms of the eating thing um, see what happens if it doesn't work for you that's when you have little of it or you know cut it out completely but you know tr try things definitely absolutely completely agree try things small amount yeah um, sometimes even things that you've had before that didn't work for you maybe try them again you yeah know. exactly just have it a small amount chew it really well see what happens i spoke to somebody who had their, had had their stoma for two years and they were still following the diet that they were given in hospital do you know for those first few days yeah you, know, you need to be having a very gentle easy diet and nobody had ever told them oh you can stop that and start eating new things um so how it, it, do you think that's the full advice is try different yeah. things little see how you go and I know I do it and I know quite a few people I know will get I know this isn't great for me but I'm, I just need some so I'm gonna have a little bit of it exactly you know? life's too short to mm. you know cut out some things that you find pleasurable um, I once had um, a, a young lad turn up to my hospital um, in, in Queensland. Um, he'd been out, he had a colostomy and he'd been out all night with his friends. He was only 19, had a vindaloo, had a lot of beer. And then, of course, you know, with a closed pouch, it didn't quite work out for him the next day. So I was like, OK, let's get you some drainable pouches and sent him on his way and he's absolutely fine, you know, but he had a great night. So yes, he had a few consequences afterwards, but his stoma will get back into its normal rhythm after that night. So yeah, just try it. Next question is how do I travel with a stoma? Um, I'm someone who loves traveling. Obviously no one's traveled very much in the past 18 months. But for me, when I got my stoma, it allowed me to travel more because all of a sudden I could plan. Before I had ulcerative colitis and I never knew when a flare was going to come. And so I just then plan a big holiday because what if I ended up having a flare in the middle of it? So for me, it was like, it, it was life-changing getting my stoma. Uh, and I don't think I did that much different apart from pack a lot more stuff. Uh, I'm probably a panic packer and pack more than I need. <laughs> Uh, but any other thoughts on travelling with a stoma, Emma? Um, no, I think, like you said, just make sure you've got you've got more than enough, not just enough, but extra. Always carry extra. Um, I have had some patients fear that their bag is suddenly going to blow up on the aeroplane. You know, fill up with wind. That that won't happen. Yeah, don't don't worry. Um, and you know, just make sure when 
you know, you are on the plane, you notice where the toilets are just in case you need to empty your pouch um, during any time. But don't be scared to, to go on a plane. Don't be scared to go on a boat. Don't be scared to travel. It's absolutely fine. And you'll see in a lot of the magazines um, that the Clostomy Association do, we have a hand in hand magazine um, about people that have traveled all around the world, gone up to mountains, um, gone snorkeling you know it's perfectly fine I would just say to just make sure you have plenty of, of supplies I was given a travel certificate as well um, yeah there is like a little little card that you can get that has um that says you have a stone in lots of different languages and that's mainly just in case you have a problem at the airport um maybe also that for whatever reason and you know I don't think please don't be scared it doesn't happen very often but you need to speak get some seek some medical advice um that you know you you have that explains that you have a stoma anything to add Sandy just the same really it's just about being organized make sure you've got sufficient product um, you know, sort of in advance or whatever. And I think, be again, because it's medical product, medical devices, um, that if <laughs> if you're like me and you do pack lots and you always hit your, your baggage allowance or whatever, then you can get an exemption to cover for that extra medical equipment. So, but it's about being organised. Great, thank you.